Welcome to SCAR Speaks. My name is Daniel Rothbard. I'm a faculty member of SCAR, and it's my pleasure to uh, participate in this interview of uh, one of our doctoral students, Adib Yusuf. Adib Yusuf uh, was born in a village of Gildo in Darfur, Sudan. He is doing, now he's currently a PhD student uh, for SCAR. Uh, before coming to our school, he received a master's degree in international studies at the University of San Francisco and bachelor degree, uh, bachelor of arts degree from Dongola University, Northern Sudan. During his undergraduate studies, Adib was a human rights activist. For 14 years, he worked with grassroots and social justice movements throughout Sudan. In April 2001, Adib co-founded the Sudan Social Development Organization, SUDO, acronym, a human rights, humanitarian relief and development NGO. Adib worked deep inside rural areas to empower local communities to demand their rights from the government. He then helped develop the Darfur Emergency Response Operation which runs programs for internally displaced persons and hosts communities in Darfur. Due to his human rights activism, Adib was detained twice by the Sudanese government for close to a year and endured to torture during this time. Adib has dedicated his life to the humanitarian and human rights struggle to end the conflict and genocide in Darfur. He's played a key role in getting the plight of his people known to the outside world through on-the-ground facilitation of the work of many of the most high-profile researchers and writers and through his own media work. He helped initiate the Rebel Letters Campaign and worked with Never Again International. His current goal is to build the possibility for a sustainable peace in Darfur the project will be targeted at local communities and key stakeholders in the region. And may I mention the uh, URL for his, his organization, adib at drdoafrica dot org. So it's a pleasure to uh, be part of this interview. Uh, for you, so thank you for agreeing to do this. Um, and I want to just go through a couple questions and get your um, insight into these. Um, first, um, as you know, the world community was uh, just stunned um, a few years ago by the genocidal violence in Darfur, reaching the peak of attention in probably 2003, 2004, with accusations of genocide. Uh, since then, this crisis has not been uh, receiving as much public attention. Um, is the crisis continuing? Uh, is, it, is there still uh, violence going on in Darfur? Yeah, thank you uh, very much for the kind introduction. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I'm, I'm feeling very sorry for the situation in Darfur. Yes, uh, it has been so long uh, over 10 years since the crisis uh, was announced to the international community back in 2003 and 2004. <coughs> the actual reality, yes, the international community has done a lot um, at the beginning of the conflict and they are still uh, trying to do something. But the conflict now uh, is even worse than when it was started in 2003-2004 and the uh, reason why because the government of Sudan doing this, uh, carrying these atrocities and uh, human rights violations and killing of innocent civilians on the watch of the international community. Before, uh, in 2003, 2004, there is only indigenous human rights organization that are uh, documenting uh, the hostilities and so on. So there is absence of the international community those days. But now, it is uh, the government that are doing this in the present of the international community. The, the war, there's nothing changed in terms of uh, the killing of the innocent civilian. 
and uh, until uh, today there is a bombardment of uh, the airplane in East Jabal uh, There is a lot of atrocities going on in the area of Hashaba. Uh, this is North Darfur. There is um, killing of innocent civilian in, inside uh, Jabal Marra and West uh, West Darfur. So there is the 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 conflict is still going on, but there is absent of the international uh, intervention to monitor or uh, to talk about the the current. Violations that the government of Sudan is carrying and uh, doing uh, right now. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> to make it short, the the um, the the conflict is still as it was, mm -hmm. and even um, even worse than it's before. Even worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, who are the major conflict parties now, uh, in addition to the uh, government forces? Yeah, in fact, uh, this is also part of the sadness. In, in therefore, when this conflict started, it was uh, three major parties, or three main parties. The government of Sudan from side and uh, SLA, uh, Sudan, Sudan uh, Regulation Movement, and Justice and Equality Movement. There's always three main uh, parties are uh, 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 fighting uh, with each other. But now the, the, the situation is bad because there's a lot of fragmentation within the rebel movement. Uh, we are talking today about 26 different rebel groups uh, in the ground. They are fighting. They are fighting all, not only with the government, but also they are fighting with themselves. Mm -hmm. um, of recent, like uh, one year ago, there is a unity of um, the, the, some of the Darfur rebel movement with the SPLM uh, North. So <coughs> they call it um, uh, Kauda. Uh, and, uh, and this brings three major um, uh, rebel movement from Darfur. There is SLA, Sudan uh, Regulation Movement, and uh, JEM, and uh, SPLM uh, North. Yeah. So there's uh, the four um, uh, organization or uh, movement come together to initiate uh, rebellion movement that they're fighting with, uh, with Sudan. But that is not only the, 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 the rebel movement that they're fighting, but also there's another uh, movement that they're not included in this uh, uh, organization, but they're still fighting also uh, in Darfur. So there's uh, a lot of um, uh, rebel movement uh, from a side fighting the government of Sudan from, from the other side. In addition to the government militia. So there's um, uh, the Janjaweed militia that are yes. siding with the government. They also consider it as a part of, uh, of the conflict. So we have the Kauda or consortium mm -hmm. of, uh, was it four rebel movements? Yeah, they are. Four. And they're committed to overthrowing the government. So they are, they are treated <coughs> by the government as traitors, as rebels. Um, and basically, would you say there's basically a war going on between the government forces and the uh, this this uh, Kauda, uh consortium? Yes, yes, it is, and um, the, it is a, it is a heavy war because it is not only limited to Darfur. Right. Um, right. The Kauda, as I said before, uh, there is uh, SPLM North, and SPLM North operate out of two regions in, in Sudan. That is the Nuba Mountain and. Um, and Blue Nile. So they are um, they are based in these two regions, but they they also extend their operation to Kurdufan and to many other places. So uh, then the other three rebel movement of their force are operating out of their forest. So so together the, the whole of them, the whole of them, the consortium, they are doing this to overthrow the government, okay. and um, that is one of their um, their priority that they have to overthrow the, the government. They have also political wing that they are working, mm -hmm. and um, they finished um, a meeting uh, a week ago uh, to restructure their uh, organization and so, and they have only one aim, that to overthrow the government. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they are, they, are, they are working, and also they are fighting as far as um, I hear yesterday there is also fighting between the SRF and, um, and, and the government of Sudan. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the mission of these organizations has not changed in recent years. It's still to overthrow the government. They're committed to uh, redressing the injustices uh, that um, the government perpetuates and, uh, and still seeking to um, address the needs of the Darfurian population. Yes, they are, uh, but they are not only focusing on Darfur. Uh, yeah, they, are okay. foc they are focusing on the whole Sudan. Right. Right. So, um, uh, as I said, the SPLM, they operate out of two regions in, in, yeah. in, in Sudan. Yeah. And now they are talking about the whole Sudan. And now also when they are um, addressing this issue, they don't address it uh, from the regional perspective. They address it from the national perspective. From the national, okay. okay. And um, that is why they reject the idea that was coming out of the, um, the African Union to have a negotiation with the North, with the government in Sudan and so And they said if they wanted to negotiate, they have to negotiate the whole issue. They don't want to separate okay. that this noble mountain, this uh, Blue Nile, or that is therefore. Okay. Yeah, so uh, on that regard, they are focusing on the comprehensive uh, mm -hmm. solution for Sudan, not focusing on a certain region or the other region. Mm -hmm. So. Um, as you know very well, there have been many peace initiatives uh, sponsored by the international community, uh, the UN, uh, in conjunction with the United States, uh, launched a peace initiative that was hosted in Doha, for example. There have been a number of peace initiatives. Um, have these not worked? Have these not been effective? Why have, have uh, these uh, the international community, which has expressed uh, a strong interest in, in stopping the violence. Why have they not been able to uh, be effective, or have they been able to be effective? Yeah, um, I, I do appreciate the role of the international community uh, on the humanitarian side, whereby they get they intervene there from the early beginning of the conflict, they bring food to the affected population, they bring medicine to the affected population. Generally, they intervene humanitarianly uh, in a very excellent way that mm -hmm. they could have. Uh, the, they they done it in a way, and they still they still do it. But in the political um, political intervention, they have been doing this through trial and error. Mm -hmm. There is no fixed plan that they wanted to. I mean, the international community focused to solve the conflict uh, in Darfur. That's why Abuja came in 2006. Then uh, Abuja was what initiative? Ab uh, yeah, Abuja is, was an agreement that signed between one of the rebel group, uh, Mini Minawi, back in 2006, and the government of Sudan, and that has never worked out. Then Mini eventually get off of that DPA. Right. It's called uh, DPA. The DPA Darfur Peace Initiative. Uh, agreement. Yeah, that for peace agreement. And uh, he get off from that and he went to the forest again and now he's joining this uh, SRF. And now, so he's participating in the rebellion yes, uh, he along is. with the other movements, even though he was uh, given a government appointment after signing with the Darfur Peace Agreement. Uh, yes, that, that's right. Like in 2006. Right. Yeah, so they signed that agreement in 2006, followed by at least uh, 18 different agreements in the same year. In, uh, 18? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, in Tripoli, inside Darfur, in Addis Ababa, and so So there's many peace agreements that they signed uh, between factions and individuals uh, that uh, they assume to be rebels and so on and so And this is part of the, uh, the government policy. Um, every three or two that they decide to come to, to, to Darfur, the, the government make them uh -huh. uh, something bigger and so and uh, the actual reality that is not true that's why the situation is deteriorating uh, every day and the fragmentation also is going every day and so on. and uh, the international community helped to bring that doha to existence and um, the actual reality doha was um, was started in a way that it can address the root cause of the conflict when jam was involved and uh, eventually, uh, GEM, that is Justice and Equality Movement. Justice and Equality, yeah. When they withdraw from that initiative, things fall, fall apart. Yeah. And the whole things uh, almost die. 
but the government because they wanted something to make as a case show for the international community that they are willing for peace and so and this is part of the tactics that the government of Sudan is playing uh, they bring uh, Tijani Sese who is in uh, who was um, uh, working for the Af for the African Union or the United Nations in Addis Ababa, and they make him uh, the leader for that uh, group, and eventually they sign an agreement uh, one year ago, uh, over one year ago. So that agreement is not hasn't make any kind of change on the ground. In fact, it create more complication. Because the division now between the supporter of Doha and the supporter of Doha, that is from the masses up to the uh, the, 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 the rebels itself, this movement that they signed the agreement. So it creates kind of tension where uh, uh, more hostility is going on and they can't defend what is going on because they don't have like military right. wing and so on. So the international community, they did this, and I'm not sure whether they doing this from the perspective that they know what's going on, or <laughs> they are doing this from uh, clueless that they don't know what is going on and so on. So, <clears throat> so it is uh, an agreement that is not going anywhere. And this is, the name of the agreement is DDPD, yes. uh, Darfur Development and Peace Yeah, Initiative. it's called uh, Doha. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Doha Peace uh, Therefore, I mean, yeah, it is, therefore, Doha Peace Document. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, something like that anyway. So anyway, the, 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 this agreement is not changing any positive things. Okay. And now the government, the parties uh, of, uh, of, of Doha, that is the mediation, uh, the Qatar government, the African Union, the United Nations, they are focusing to make, to make a conference, uh, the donors uh, conference that is supposed to be in December in, um, in, in, in Doha and Qatar. And uh, the government, they are encouraging this idea not because of their fault, because they are, the economic situation in Sudan is, uh, is, is too bad. So they wanted some money uh, so as to improve the economic uh, situation in, in Sudan and so but not because of the situation uh, in Darfur or for the peace of Darfur and so on. So the peace in the, of Darfur, I think it can be, it can come from a different way, but not from the direction that uh, they are taking or they are talking about. Not good. But you're saying that the humanitarian relief has been positive in, in certain stages, in certain uh, phases. Is that right? Yeah, what, 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 uh, why is, what I start uh, with is that the international community, they did a great job in the, in the, inter uh, in the uh, humanitarian intervention um, from, from the early beginning of the conflict. Yes, uh, now the, the humanitarian situation also is not that good uh, because of the insecurity in the ground, because of the lack of funding for some NGOs, because of the government uh, chasing out uh, 16 different organizations out of Darfur, and those are the active organizations that they provide different set, uh, services mm -hmm. to uh, the masses in the ground and so on. So all this together, it makes uh, the, the humanitarian situation also uh, kind of bad, and this lack of medicine, lack of food, mm -hmm. lack of, of um, non-food items, and many other things uh, on the ground. Mm -hmm. But there's many um, camps for internally displaced persons, of course, and and these camps are supplied by uh, you know funds and services from internationals. Or who, where 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 are the resources coming from for these uh, for people living in these camps? Yeah, in fact, there's 70, 79, uh, 79 yeah, internal displaced persons camps throughout uh, Darfur. And uh, there's uh, at least about uh, 4 million people living in those uh, camps. 4 million? Y yes. Uh, Darfuris? Or yeah. Sudanese generally, just Darfuris? Darfuris. And, and if I could add, this is one of the greatest, uh, this is a country with uh, 
one of the largest populations in the world of IDPs, in Sudan generally, and yeah. Darfur in particular. Yeah. Um, many observers and many um, uh, human rights organizations and humanitarian organizations, they take the back the old data that was dated to 2004, 2003, when the conflict was started, and they are talking about two and a half million IDPs or so. But in the past uh, nine years, there's increasing of uh, numbers yeah. in the camps, and also the, the, uh, the hostilities create a situation where the villagers leave the camp, leave the village, and they they, they move to the IDP camps. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, uh, 79 different internal displaced mm -hmm. persons uh, camps, and uh, those um, population they depend 100 percent on the international aid. 100 percent. So the government is basically n negligent in supplying resources to these camps. No, in fact, the government make use out of this because the government today, they make all the transportation out, they are taking care of the transportation. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, government agencies that they provide um, transport, but not free, because the organizations, they are paying the government. Oh, is that right? So they're yeah. charging the organizations, the internationals, to go to the camps to provide humanitarian relief. Yeah, and this is one of the one of the one of the negative aspects of the international uh, of the humanitarian intervention in Darfur, that the government the uh, they give the government hand over all its responsibility to the international uh, organization. Mm -hmm. So from the road construction mm -hmm. to the basic human needs, the the things that the government have to support to to provide medicine, food, water, and so on. They hand over all these things to the international organization, mm -hmm. and they use all that fund to make to to get bullets in order to kill the people in that. To kill to for military supplies. Yeah, so all the uh, even the even the even the taxes that they get from the masses, mm -hmm. they turn it against them. So instead of providing um, service to the to the masses, they they bring bullets in order to uh, to kill them. So uh, to make it short, the uh, the humanitarian organization they support the the masses hundred percent, mm -hmm. and this uh, uh, internal displaced persons they used to be the uh, the protective for the food for the people in Darfur mm -hmm. because they are the villages and they supply the towns the cities uh, mm -hmm. with kind of food and now they are in a situation where it is. They can't go back to their village. Right, they no, can't. That, cannot yeah. go back. The villages are not really. It's not safe. It's not safe, and also the resources are depleted or destroyed. Right? Yeah. So uh, the gardens is um, the, the ginger cut the garden, cut the trees, and so on, and so. On. So the livelihood is not is, is so is so bad. So right. that's why the internal displaced persons they are still in the camps. The government talk uh, talk and keep talking about voluntary return and so on, and so. On. But because of the insecurity in the ground, mm -hmm. people they fear to go. And mm -hmm. They have a condition that if there is security, we don't want to, to remain in the camp. Mm -hmm. But because of the insecurity, we can't risk to go we back. Can't risk, and this is especially dangerous for women and children. Absolutely, uh, who are who are extremely vulnerable to this. Yeah. Um, so, wh what are the prospects? What, what's your crystal ball say? Your, what are you predicting? Is it going to get better? Is it going to get worse? What, what, what should we look towards? Uh, we in a, a, a school for conflict analysis and resolution. What direction do you see most promising? I think uh, I think there's something. There's uh, there's a lot of things here. Uh, but let me start by talking about the unity. The the step that uh, highly needed in Darfur is the unity of. And in fact, even the unity of the Sudanese unity, because with this kind of fragmentation, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to achieve peace mm -hmm. and to achieve change. Because every single time people they sign peace, the situation gets worse. Mm -hmm. So they need kind of unity to bring the the, the the stakeholders together to agree on on moving forward for peace. Then they can start uh, the peace uh, peace process. Without this. They can only make um, individual peace 
to mm -hmm. individuals, and that can never help uh, the, the, situa the situation. So the unity is highly needed, mm -hmm. the unity of um, the rebel movement, mm -hmm. uh, the unity of the masses, mm -hmm. because the, the masses also divided on the tribal lines, mm -hmm. according to the, uh, to the uh, as the rebel was also divided. And so so there's, uh, there's a need for uh, unification for the rebel, mm -hmm. the masses, and, and, and the civil society. Civil society. So civil society has to unify, overcome ethnic differences. The movements have to unify among themselves, and of course, relation between the movements and civil society yeah. has to be uh, stronger and more um, and deeper. Yeah. So this way, this way, this can be the first step toward uh, peace. Then, um, then I think the, the the second thing it might be um, the empowerment of the the masses with um, education, peace education. Because what happens is that uh, the government disempower the masses, mm -hmm. and we need to empower the, the masses in order to know their rights, and that can help the peace to move ahead. So capacity building for mm -hmm. the, the masses of peace and peace initiative is uh, also um, very important. Uh, then the next step, the, uh, the, the third step can be um, bringing the, the, the stakeholder together for negotiation. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, um, this is really very valuable, and uh, your insights into this are, are really remarkable, um, both from uh, kind of an uh, academic standpoint and also from a personal experience. And I wish you luck yeah. on your, yeah. in your organization, yeah. and I uh, you. want to continue hearing about it as thank you proceed forward. Thank so, you very much. Thank you very much, Adik. Yeah,